If you like this video, please go ahead and consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you have not already. And please, by all means, share this video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map for suppressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Oberschwaben. But before that, this video is brought to you by Gizmo UK and Doughboy2913. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Oberschwaben map. You can find over to FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to beautiful Upper Swabia in the Raisin Ravensburg and yeah, another area. This map is an original replica of the area between Bad Walsy and Obersendorf. Again. I'm not good at these these words. Above Lake Constance with real roads and field divisions. This map can be used as a basis for role play as it offers many opportunities to immerse yourself in various roles. What awaits you on this map? All farms with pastures are set up for animal grazing. All courtyards and BGA are set up with the manure system. All fully developed AI splines for helpers up to the fields. All purchase and selling stations have different opening times. Two start options for easy and demanding feeding. And we will break down the two feeding options here in a little bit. Real license plates. Small animals such as calves are available. One small old farm with micromanagement and a hay crane. And many small tasks that will determine your everyday life. One large modern yard for medium and large tractors. One resettler farm with cows and sheep that can be breathed back to life okay one playable stockyard trade to supply the local farmers with stock one municipal yard building for community maintenance and winter service one area for small wage companies with an attached recycling center one sewage treatment plant with manure purchase option one large bga various pastures that can be used for animal grazing outdoor various outdoor silos and outdoor halls that can be purchased Apple tree plantations with productions for various fruit juices. Carpentry with production, purchase of wood chips and sell for wood. 130 fields and meadows and forest areas from one hectare up to six hectares in size. Various sales outlets such as a country store. Small productions such as allotments or apple orchards. You can take water from ponds and rivers. There are plenty of forests for the tree cutters among you and this map is set up with precision farming now this map does have several required mods and those are listed here i will tell you that these mods are indeed the only required mods so you want to have any extra mods that you will need to download if you do go and put this map up on a multiplayer server with that said let's go ahead and load in now, in addition to those required mods, which are the bale conveyor belt, the consumable purchase station, the corner shed, animal farm pack, the European decorative buildings pack, the floor plane weighing station, the foil tunnel, the garden plot, German grain mill, lizard silos, medium biogas plant package, modern machine hull package, the Oberlinter, the map itself, Old structure, old wood sheds, pack of greenhouses, the small wooden manure heap, and the VDI large storage halls. We are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you do load this map up in farm management or start from scratch, you'll find all the farms are built out exactly how you're going to see them here in new farm mode. With the exception, you do not own any land, nor do you own any starting machinery in those alternate game modes. Also, if you load this map up with maybe a low end system, you will find that the frame rates are fairly steady around 60 FPS, except if you go down into the woods. I did find that in the forest, I was having a little bit of a frame drop but I didn't see frames drop anywhere below 50 FPS overall. Now that is done on a system with integrated AMD graphics. Now, when we load in the map, we do get a warning here. It basically says anyone who wants to use a crane at the starting farm always has to use farm ID one. 
so buy this farm first. So in multiplayer, this must be the first farm you buy. If this is a second farm, then the crane will not function. So be sure to buy this as farm ID one on multiplayer. With respect to single player, well, everything you buy is farm ID one, so you won't have that issue. Let's go ahead and take a look at our main PDA. You see we have kind of the map is split up into kind of two sections here to the north and west. We've got the main starting farm. We have two other farms here and several fields. And then we do have a few roads cutting through a forested area in order to get to the second main section of the map, which is basically in the southeast corner. Down here we do have another farmyard. We have a small community area. This is going to be for the uh, community road maintenance. We also have our BGA down here. And then we have a little section here in the northeast. And then a small section of fields over here in the southwest. This map is excluding cotton and sugarcane. So cotton and sugarcane have been explicitly removed from this map. But we also have added clover, alfalfa, and rye. So also, if you are playing with the premium expansion, we will we will have our red beets, carrots, and parsnips. If we take a look at our farmland screen, we see we start out with farmland ID 120. That is the main starting farm. We also have farmland ID 24, 40, and 45 owned at the start. Now, in addition to that, we have a farm that is set up here, farmland ID 123. This is going to be for cows and sheep. We have another farm at farmland ID 125, which is going to be chickens and cows. We have a cow pasture at farmland ID 122. We have a small machine shed basically here at farmland ID 130. In addition to that, we have a cow farm at farmland ID 139. We have a cow pasture at farmland ID 127. That's going to be located just north of the community municipal area that is at farmland ID 132. And we have our biogas plant at farmland ID 133. The BGA can be bought for $1 million. Our cow farm at 139 can be bought for $688,000. Our cow pasture 127 is going to be viable for $39,000. The cow pasture up here at farmland ID 122. This is going to be viable for 28560 Farmland ID 125 is going to be $305,000. Farmland ID 123 is going to be $93,000. And the main starting farm in any alternate game mode is going to cost you $231,000. Let's go and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large these farmlands are, if these farmlands include any field or fields, what is included? Then lastly, how much is that farmland gonna cost us? Now we're gonna take a look at our field calculator screen. This is gonna show us the specific sizes of each field, because we do know that the farmlands couldn't include not only the fields, but a little bit of area around them. Now this map is making use of the generic soil map that is a part of the precision farming mod. So let's go ahead and see how that is being applied to these fields. We can see the fields to the north in the general area of the starting farm are going to be a mix of loam and silty clay with a wee little bit of sandy loam mixed in. The fields right in the middle of the map are going to be a mix of loamy sand and sandy loam and loam. And then to the southeast, we have a bit more of silty clay being mixed in there and a little less loamy sand. With respect to the base game crop counter, well, we are working with a custom crop counter on this map. Somewhat misspoke there. This is not the base game crop counter because we do have some extended planting seasons here for our wheat and barley. And then, of course, we do have our clover, alfalfa, and rye, which have been added here as additional crops. 
With respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of the crops that are included on this particular map. In addition, we do have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay straw, and grass. As we work down through all the base game production items, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items once again. With respect to lime, we do have the ability to buy bulk lime at two different locations, and we do have the ability to get rid of our stones as well at two different locations. We also have on this map some custom products in fruit juice, apples, fruit waste, grain scraps then we have clover clover hay and clover silage as well as alfalfa alfalfa hay and alfalfa silage we have rye and then with respect to our farm production pack we do not have the ability of washing any of our vegetables and selling them nor do we have the ability to sell any of the premium expansion production items or should i say the platinum expansion production items with respect to our premium expansion, we do have the ability to sell the premium expansion production items, but we do not have the ability to sell separated manure. So if you are playing with straw harvest, no, if you are playing with pumps and hoses, then you will need to put down your own sell point for your separated manure. Now, with respect to straw harvest, we do have the ability to sell our hay and straw pellets. As far as our starting machinery in New Farm Remote, we do start out with a fairly large list of starting machinery. It is all owned, none of it is leased, and it's all fairly well maintained, with the exception of the Boss Alpine 251. That is going to have basically zero maintenance on it, and therefore it's going to have the lowest resale value of the lot of machinery. We start out with a chicken, calf barn, cow barn, and pig barn at the main starting farm. We do have contracts available on this map, and we do have a few productions that we own at the start. We start out owning a small greenhouse made of windows. We have the hay dryer, which is also going to work with clover and alfalfa. And we're going to have a choice of either using wood chips or straw to dry our hay, clover hay, or alfalfa hay. Then we have a TMR mixer, and we do have quite a number of different recipe options for our TMR. So we have the ability to use mineral feed. We also have the ability to use grain scraps. We can also then use clover silage, alfalfa silage, alfalfa hay, or clover hay in our mix of inputs in order to ultimately output TMR. We have a grain meal production, which is going to accept wheat, barley, oats, or soybeans and output those grain scraps that we may make use of in the TMR mixer. We have cheese production at the main starting farm, as well as butter production in order to debruce our butter. Then we have a garden plot, which is going to take seeds, solid fertilizer, and water, and output tomatoes, lettuce, or strawberries. Now, this map does have 24 productions on it. This is simply a sampling of those productions. We will do a thorough rundown of the other productions here in a little bit. Lastly, this map does have 12 collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Fent Favorite 511C and the Bure 6105 small tractor. We have the Dutes Far Top Liner 4090H Harvester that is paired up with the 4090H Grain Header as well as our 4090H Header Trailer. We have a Schaefer 23E front loader, as well as a Walger DK115 trailer. A pair of those, in fact. We have the Amazon Sintio 4000 Super Cultivator, the Nordstein HK25 NS3030 Cedar and Power Harrow combination. We have the Hardy Mega 1200L Fertilizer and Herbicide Sprayer. We have the Amazon ZATS3200 Fertilizer Spreader. We have the FarmTech Super Cease 800 Slurry Tanker. We have the 4140L trailed mower. We have the Boss Alpine 251 four edge wagon. And this is going to be the one with basically zero maintenance on it. We have the Aquatran 7300 water tanker, as well as a silage cutter and universal bucket for our front loader. And we wrap it up with a bale conveyor belt. And this is one of the required mods. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and take a look at our mods and DLCs. 
And you will note that this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements. And of the required mods, only the bale conveyor, conveyor belt is a machinery mod. Now, before we dive into taking a look here around the farm, I do want to talk a little bit about the animal food requirements because this map has two different animal food requirements. So let's go ahead and pull up our animal food overview. This is a mod that we do make use of during these map tours. And we are in the basic map. So we will take a look at this and then we'll go and compare this to the food plus variants of this map and we'll see how things are different. So with respect to our cows, note they are sequential. Sequential feeding means that the cows will eat the best food only, and when the best food has been consumed, then they will eat the second best and third best and so forth. So the best food for our cows, which is gonna give us 100% effectiveness, is gonna be TMR. With respect to our TMR, we're gonna be able to use hay, clover hay, alfalfa hay, or hay pellets, silage, clover silage, or alfalfa silage, straw straw pellets and mineral feed or grain scraps to make our tmr in a tmr mixer we all then have hay at 75 percent weight We're going to be hay alfalfa hay clover hay or hay pellets silage is going to be at 50 percent weight and remember these are sequential we do not have to fill all of these silage alfalfa silage or clover silage and then grass which is graf alfalfa or clover Sheep are going to require grass, which is going to be grass, alfalfa, clover, hay, alfalfa, hay, clover, hay, or hay pellets. They are also sequential, but they only have one food input. Pigs are parallel, which means you need to provide all four of these food types in order for maximum effectiveness. At 50% effectiveness, the base food is going to be corn, sorghum, fruit waste, or pig food. Grain is going to be wheat, barley, grain scraps, or pig food. Protein is going to be soybeans, canola, sunflowers, or pig food. And our root crops is going to be potatoes, sugar beet, and if we have the premium expansion, carrots, parsnips, red beets, or pig food. Horses are also parallel on this map. So base food is going to be oat, sorghum, or apple at 57%. Hay is going to be at 38% for hay, alfalfa, hay, and hay pellets. And root crops are going to be at 5% for carrots, parsnips, and red beets. If you do not have a premium expansion, then this item will not be listed for our horses. Then lastly, chickens are going to require wheat, barley, or grain scraps. Now let's go and load up the food plus variants of this map and compare what our animal food requirements are going to look like. Real quick, we just look at this map, which is the name Oberschweben. And then the food plus variant, which is what we were just about to load, is going to be located loaded here and it's going to be listed as food plus. With the food plus variant loaded, we are going to see quite a few changes. So for our cows, they are now parallel feeders, which means we need to provide all four of these food sources. Hay is going to be at 50%. And what's going to qualify as hay is going to be either hay, alfalfa hay, clover hay, hay pellets, or TMR. Silage is going to be classified at 20%, and that's going to be silage, alfalfa silage, clover silage, or TMR. Grass is going to be at 15%, and that's going to be grass, alfalfa, clover, or TMR. And base food is going to be mineral feed, grain scraps, sherbet sure cut, or TMR. So clearly TMR is in all of these just like pig food is in all of them for the pigs. So what does it take to make TMR in the Food Plus variant of this map? Well, we're gonna require hay, alfalfa hay, clover hay, and hay pellets for our hay portion. We're gonna have silage, alfalfa silage, and clover silage for our silage portion, straw and straw pellets for straw, and mineral feed, grain scraps, or sugar beet cut for our mineral feed portion of our TMR mix. Sheep are also parallel feeders, and now we must supply both grass and hay. So we need to supply grass, alfalfa, or clover for our grass requirement, and hay, alfalfa, hay, clover, hay, or hay pellets for our hay requirement. Pigs maintain their parallel food requirement, and they also maintain their corn requirement for sorghum, food waste, and pig food. 
or grain. We have wheat, barley, rye, or pig food. Protein, soybeans, canola, sunflowers, apples, or pig food. And our root crops, shimmy, carrots, potatoes, shimmy cut, lettuce, tomatoes, parsnips, red beets, or pig food. So lots of additional options there. That horses are parallel. And now they have four different food requirements. Oat, sorghum, and apple for base food. For roughage, it's hay, alfalfa, hay, or hay pellets. For green feed, it's grass, alfalfa, or lettuce. And for root crops, it's carrots, parsnips, and red beets. Chickens are also now parallel feeders, and they have two food requirements. We have wheat, barley, and sorghum for grain. And for protein, we have corn, rye, bread, sugar be cut, and grain scraps as options for their protein. So quite a big difference between the two variants of the maps with respect to how you're going to feed your animals. While we're here, let's go ahead and take a look at the various productions. I've gone ahead and bought all of the land on the map because some of the productions you will need to buy the land in order to own. And I have purchased the rest of the productions that you can purchase aside from owning the land. So in addition to all the productions that we already owned at the start, we have a forest sea production point. Well, that's really just going to produce fruit juice from apples or strawberries or tomatoes. And it's going to produce fruit juice and fruit waste. We have wood chip production, which is going to take wood and make wood chips. We have another dairy, which is going to take milk and sugar and produce butter, cheese, or chocolate. We have our carpentry, which is going to take wooden planks and make furniture as well as wood chips. Our wood trader, which is going to be our sawmill, which is going to accept wood and produce planks and wood chips. We have a grain mill, which is going to take wheat, barley, oat, sorghum, and make flour. Then we have three different sets of apple trees, which are going to take water and manure and produce apples. We have hay drying capabilities. So we have some outdoor hay dryers, which are going to simply take grass, clover, or alfalfa, and produce hay, clover, hay, or alfalfa hay. We have our BGA, which is going to output digestate, methane, and energy. Then we have four foil tunnels. Now, these foil tunnels are basically greenhouses. They're going to produce tomatoes, lettuce, and strawberries. We have another hay dryer. Now, this one is going to require wood chips or straw to basically produce our hay, clover hay, or alfalfa hay. And that is basically a rundown through all of the productions that are available here on this particular map. In addition, before we go too far, let's take a look at build mode. Now, this map does have several required mods, and several of them are buildings, but we also have a few buildings that are included with the map itself. With respect to silos, we do have a few custom silos from the Lizard Silos mods, as well as the Modern Machine package and the Small Manure Heap, as well as silos extensions, containers, tools, and farmhouses with respect to production well i would hope that we would see a lot of the custom production that is available here on this map we do have some production here with the grain german grain mill mod and the bga package but a lot of the other custom production like the hay dryers the fruit production sadly are not also placeable we have a few placeable greenhouses that are again part of the various required mods. Base game orchards, generators. We do have a few placeable animal pastures that are part of the mod, are part of the map, and also part of the various required mods. You have several decoration packages, again, for placing deco elements. And if we go here to our landscaping and our painting, we have fairly standard painting textures and a fairly standard plant textures as well. Now, I will say that this 
main farm is a little bit confusing because there are an absolute ton of things going on here and the triggers are not super obvious across the street we do have our garden plot so we were dump point we have our interactive point and then we're gonna have our pallet spawn point over here on the side back here to the main farm we have our chicken coop located right here so we're at dump point for our food we can put a total of 30 chickens in here and of course this map does have our baby animals from Hofbergman and the enhanced animal pack we have our chicks chickens ducklings and ducks We have a dealer maintenance trigger located right here. We have our silo output located right there. Around the back of this building, we have a greenhouse. This is the greenhouse with windows. Our interactive icon. We have our water point there and our pallet spawn point. Now, with respect to our various triggers, we have a dump point here. And that is because inside here, well, we have our farmhouse wardrobe trigger. We have our sleep trigger on the couch. A little kitchen area. We have a dump point here, but we really don't know what this really is a dump point for it's, it's really little indication as to possibly what might be going on here i wasn't able to go up these stairs i tried and kind of get stuck and here we have our cheese shop so i would assume that this may be the dump point for our cheese shop this may also be some sort of dump point for our cheese shop, but really it's not all that clear. I would like to have maybe some little little assembly of maybe items here, kind of giving you a general idea of what is supposed to go on there. Now up here we have, well, we've got a lot going on. And we have a crane first off, and we can get into this crane and make use of it. The crane controls, well, it's left click, left and right to rotate the crane, up and down to raise and lower the crane, right click, left and right to move the crane left and right, and up and down to move the arm in and out. Both left and right mouse button up and down is going to open and close the claw. Left and right is going to rotate the claw, okay? Let's jump out here because we basically have a green dryer. This is our base game dryer. So we have a fill point there. We have a dump point here. Then we have a dump point up inside of here for our dryer, right? So we're going to be able to, I believe, use our grabber to maybe pick up things that we place here into there little trap door which is going to take us down into our cow feeding area and we'll talk about this area here in a little bit all right let me go back outside in order to show you the triggers for these doors because these doors are kind of uh well they're kind of interesting so we have four doors here and if we are standing basically directly in front of these doors we can open the lower doors left and right 
But to open the upper doors, we have to go a little bit further right and a little bit further left. And now we're able to open all four sides of this door. It's similar on the other side, but a little bit more confusing. So let me run over there and show you what we're talking about here. So here we have the same four doors. But now we've got a lot of extra triggers here. Okay, so we have to our right, to our left, to our left again. No, we're not doing the cha-cha slide now, y'all. Okay, now to the right. So we have to come up close and kind of get up here on top of this lower thing. And, oh, now finally we can open that door. So it's, it's a little, it's a little touchy. Okay. Here we have an option to turn the crane off and activate the blower. So if we click that now. Now we have our dump point here for our hay dryer, as opposed to making use of a crane. So if you are someone that doesn't want to use a crane, well, you can use this option here. We have our animal dialogue. This is going to be for our cow area. We're only going to be able to hold 10 cows in here. We do have calves as well as bulls of various sorts available to us here. And we have our dump point here for our straw. We have a water point. We have our slurry point. This is that bale elevator, the bale conveyor belt. And we have our manure heap. Now that's not the only cow area we have access to. We also have access to another cow area right here by these four doors. This time we have the ability to put five cows in here. And these are basically going to be for our calves overall. Open the door. And then inside of here we have dump points for our straw, our food, and our pickup point for our manure. Now where we have our wheel loader, or front loader, sorry, that is going to be our dump point for our food for the cows on that end of the barn. Then we have our dump point here for our silo. Yeah, just, just move that out of the way. Nice little animations going here. So this is where we're going to dump our silo. And then we have, again, our silo output right there. So we're going to come up here. We're going to click left click by these pallets to assemble and deassemble our silo trigger. Over here, I'm gonna go through the little people door. And inside here, we didn't have access to open the bigger door. This is gonna be our TMR mixer that we already talked about. So we have our dump point. We have then our trigger activate point. So you can see it's covered there. You see it's covered. Well, if I come over here and left click, now it is uncovered. And we're going to be able to put things into there. We have our output pipe there as well. And a little bit of storage up here on top. We have another maintenance trigger inside of here. This time just a workshop trigger. We have bale and pallet storage. This is obviously a cool building, a cool house for storing our butter production. 250 pallets in there. 
And then inside of here, well, we've got butter production and our cheese production. So the trigger to the right is cheese and the trigger to the left is butter. So we're at dump points for those. And then our pallet spawn points for those as well. We like the animation and the hint of cold air coming out of these refrigerated units. It's pretty neat. Now, with respect to this farm being customizable, I would not suggest trying to sell anything on this farm. Because a lot of the deco elements on this farm are going to remain if you sell the buildings. And I did run into a repeating Lua error that caused the game save to crash. So I had to exit and reload because it was basically I lost all control of my character movement when I tried to sell something. I just don't know what it was trying to sell here on this farm. But I did know try to sell something and then suddenly my game was out of control. Here we have our small pig barn. Seven pigs overall. And we're gonna have our food and then our manure heat. So you're gonna need something small in here in order to get the food into these little triggers. Over here, well, we have our grain meal production. This is again gonna take grain and make grain scraps out of it. We have our output pipe for our grain scraps. And we have our dump station for our grain. Come around the back. And then here we're going to have wood chip production, I believe. Let's uncover. And this says... Brain and blower off. So let's go up here. And we have bale storage up here for 600 bales. Now I don't see a second crane, so I'm not really sure what is going on down here, to be quite honest. But I do know if we look inside here. We do see wood chips. So this, maybe this is the wood chip input for the uh, for the hay dryer. But the hay dryer is over here in this other building, which is a little bit confusing. It's gonna take us up to that bale storage. It's up here. And that is pretty much the main starting farm. We've got some sheds here. We've got our machinery kind of scattered around and everything. And our farmhouse right is is right in there. Now let's take a look here at our other farm locations so we're right here let's just jump up here to this orange area and we have a fertilizer and herbicide silo here we have our manure heap we have our slurry point we have our milk point for then cows, which are going to be over here. We have our food and straw. And we're going to be able to put 120 cows inside of here. We have more bale and pallet storage. Located right here for another total 600 bales of storage. Here we have our sheep barn. 45 sheep in total. We also have the ability to do goats and rams here. 
So we have our food trough. And then we have, I guess they're right here in front of this is going to be our straw point. And we have our silo dump and fill point. Now, as far as this farm being customizable, we can sell most of the things here, but I do believe I'm remembering that there was a few deco elements that did remain. Let's come over here to the orange farm for lack of really understanding which, which color we're looking at here. We have a chicken coop. So we have our egg spawn point here. We have our food trigger and our animal delivery trigger for a total of 360 chickens or ducks. At this location, we do have slurry storage and it is literally right next to our animal dealer. So remember in the description, it talked about a farm where basically you could get into um, basically animal rearing, raising of animals. And I believe that's talking about this area here. You have our farm silo, so we have a dump point and our fill point. And with respect to farm, this farm being customizable, you can sell it, but you note these signs on these buildings. They remain even if you sell the building. So I would not, again, recommend in selling any of these structures on these farms because things do stick around. We have our food and straw trigger. We have our milk trigger. Eighty cows inside of here. And we have our manure heap. So we got our milk trigger there. This is going to be our dump point for straw. Now these cows are tied to the animal dealer. I do like that we have our animated animals here. Let's have uh what we got we got Oh my oh my but we do have ear tags that's, that's a nice detail and then down here we do have one two three and four silage bunkers these silage bunkers cannot be sold. Well, you can sell them, but they don't go away. Just the triggers are going to go away. And like I said, up here we have our animal dealer. Right next to that farm. And we have our animal dealer bale cell trigger. Now, in addition to up here, we do have a cow pasture. Let's just jump over to that. We have our water trigger. We have our food trigger. 50 cows in here. I'm not really sure what this is turning on and off. Oh, it's opening and closing the gate. Okay. And then we have our milk point over here now in addition to our cow pasture we do have a usable storage shed also up here at this location and if we sell the cow pasture well the triggers will go away but the area is still fenced you see we have our harvester over here as well We make our way to the middle of the map. We have our community yard. From here, we're going to be able to sell things like our stones. 
We're going to be able to fill lime. We do have a small silo over here as well. And a little bit of machine storage. This is really set up not as a farm area, but kind of as an area where you might stage things to do road work, road clearing, snow clearing, and the like. Just north of that, we have another cow pasture. So we have our water, we have our milk, we have our cows for a total of 50 here. We have our trigger to open and close the fence. And we have our food trough. There's our counts. Now we just so happen to have right up here on top of this hill, also one of our apple trees. So we have our water trigger, we have our interactive icon, and we have our spawn point for our apples. This is also going to be our manure heat for our, uh, well, our open cow pasture. Hmm. Interesting. Someone's coming and collecting manure from the ground and putting it here. We have a large cow farm here at Farmland ID 139, basically just to the east of the community yard. So we just jumped over to there. The slowest moving doors you've ever seen in your life. But we do not have any sort of triggers in there for our farmhouse. And here we have a cell point for our cheese and some other productions. Machine storage. We have a milk output. We have a fill point. We have another trigger here to turn the crane on and off. So this is where we're going to find our second crane hay dryer, most likely. We have our manure heap. Let's go upstairs. And inside of here. Well, we have our interactive point for our hay dryer. We have our dump point. A fill point trigger. Interesting. He's going to drop us down at the feeding area. I'm not seeing the crane. Oh, it's over here. It's... it's more of an elevator than a crane, it looks like. So I guess you put your bales on here, you run them up. you come inside of here and then you have some way of moving them from here into your dryer production I suppose I don't know it seems a little seems a little confusing I think if I was playing this map, I would just turn on the blower and be done with it. So here we have our food trough.
And I haven't seen for the life of me where we would buy our animals here. Oh, I believe I know where they are. It's over here. Because I remember finding this earlier when I was looking around. Hunter cows inside of here. Here we have our blower again. We have our silo dump point. And again, I guess this is going to be uh, our trigger for our wood chips for that for that dryer. I mean, we've got lots of cool things going on here. Well, if we're moving bales around, we're either going to have to move and use the liftable bales or we're going to have to use the little small bales so we can move them around because we're definitely not going to be able to put like a skid steer up there. I don't see any way of doing that. We have one, two, and three silage bunkers oh we moved our workshop trigger outside That was kind of neat. I mean, we do have really nice buildings over here. Some dump points that are gonna have our, our heap storage. Another dump point here for our silo. And then I'm wondering what that is over there. If it's a second silo or what? Because we have a fill pipe there and a dump point over here. That yeah, says silo. So this is the larger industrial kind of cow farm. And then we have our BGA down here to the south. So let's come back up here to our starting farm area. Where we can then kind of start our fly around. So once again, we're back here at our starting farm area. A nice little look of the land here, the forested area. It's a really, really nice looking map for sure. And I think it would play great on multiplayer with maybe three or four different farms. The main starting farm here. And we have the two smaller farms over here in the north. Then we have that large area down to the south. So I think you could really have at least two distinctive farm areas and kind of farm the north and farm the south as two different farms or maybe three or four smaller to medium sized areas. So we have our starting farm yard here and up here at this town. We have a restaurant cell point here in town. We're probably going to be able to draw water out of this pond. Over here we have a grain 
cell point. And we're gonna have then our wood chips production here. So we're dump point and our interactive point to sell logs. So that's our fill point to draw wood chips out. Here we have another one of our apple trees. I believe there are three apple trees on the map. And again, we have 24 different productions pre-placed. Here we have that cow pasture and where our harvester is stored. And then we'll make our way over here where we have our animal dealer and then that third northern farm with the silage bunkers. You will see that we do have some utility lines that are running through some of these fields. These utility lines do have collisions on them. So if you are going to be playing with hired helpers or just working the fields yourself, you will need to work around those utility lines. Here we have our third apple tree and a little shed up here with solar panels because the description did say that you would find kind of scattered around the map little utility sheds here and there. With respect to our scoring metric, we're going to give the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. With respect to the ability to sell all our basing crops, animal outputs, and productions, we are also going to be giving the map a full point there as well. So here we have the vehicle dealer. We're going to come in here. We've got a little bit of a kind of a store. And then we have our dealer. We have our dealer trigger. And if we pick up our Mahindra, well, we're going to find that our vehicle spawn just outside the vehicle dealer. Not the biggest area for vehicles to spawn in it, given the size of this map and some of the sizes of these fields, but it's not too terribly small either. With respect to our dealer maintenance trigger, well, the trigger is going to be activated right here in the garage. And we do have some markers here, but do note that the trigger does extend outside of this building. So there you can see where it extends. It would be nice to see those markers extend out here, just so players are fully aware that they don't have to actually go into the shed. And then down this road, well, we have another bale cell point, and we've got some nice animated horses over here. We wind our way through this road and through the forested area. So you have some nice fields, some nice roads going off into the forest. Just, it's a really well done map, I like how it's laid out. Now this is, as the map author said, representing a real life area. So that might be one reason why it feels really well, right? It's got the right feel to it. Over here inside of this forested area, we do have a little bit of a lake and a bit of a root juice production. So I do like these signs, these murals on various buildings. So we are output for our fruit waste, I believe. Inside here, we have our pallet spawn point. We have our water point and our interactive point for our fruit juice. Huh. And right around the corner here, kind of hidden by the dump point. So these are some pretty tight areas. But also a nice kind of relaxing area here as well. If I didn't say so already, we're going to give the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such and 
the ability to sell all our base heating products, animal outputs, and productions. Here we have a little bit of a solar yard. I don't believe that that is going to give us any additional money. But that is going to be located down here. And it is basically in the unbuyable land, which can be bought for $903,000. Our BGA, which is located down here, we can sell the BGA and we can sell the sheds here at the biogas plant. So if we did want to put something else down, we would have the ability to clear a large amount of area and maybe put our own BGA down, maybe with pumps and hoses or one of the other kind of BGA mods. We do have a small silo system down here as well and a wash area. We have our dairy production. So we have our pallet spawn point. We have our dump point around the back. And our interactive point here at the front door. You can see just north of there, we do have the large cow farm that we concluded our farm tour on. Something that we did not notice is just beside that, we do have the four foil tunnels. These are greenhouses. We have our water point. We have our interactive icon. And then we're going to have our pallet spawn point on the other side of these tunnels. So we did mention these silage bunkers. And you can see where then these tunnels are with respect to those silage bunkers and the rest of this farmyard. If we follow the road here, we're going to make our way kind of to another little town area. So we have our fuel point. We also have some triggers located inside of here. So we have a fill point for liquid herbicide and fertilizer. We can buy seed solid fertilizer and lime here as well. We have our grain mill located right here. So we have our pallet spawn point. We have our dump point and we have our interactive point over here along the side. You're going to be able to sell potatoes as well as manure, sugar beet, and silage. This is going to be our sawmill, the pallet spawn point. Interactive icon to sell wood, a wood dump point trigger. Then we have our carpentry, right? So we're gonna have our wood chip fill point there, our dump point, our wood cell trigger, our pallet spawn point for our carpentry, our interactive icon for that as well. And then here we have that community yard. I guess it's going to be for like road maintenance, road clearing, and such. We have those apple trees we mentioned. Here we have that cow pasture we mentioned. And then our natural hay dryers are going to be located up here on this hill as well. So we're going to have our dump point, our fill point, and our interactive icon. Again, for these outdoor hay drying, it's going to accept grass, clover, or alfalfa, and produce hay, clover hay, or alfalfa hay. I would like the ability to have been able to place these, but when I looked down through all of the build mode, I never really found 
where we would be able to possibly place them down. And we're going to make our way over here to the west, where we're going to conclude this particular map tour. See, we have a nice little windy road making its way over here. And what do we have going on over here? Well, here we're going to be able to sell manure. This is going to be the sewage treatment plant, if you will. We have our dump point for our slurry over here. We have a bit of a recycling center. And then right beside that recycling center, here we basically have a little bit of a machine storage yard. This can be bought and made use of. Here at the storage yard, we have a small silo. And we have two doors, two machine doors. But you're not gonna be able to open those doors from the outside. You're gonna have to come in through this little person door and through the person door, you're then gonna be able to open the big doors, right? So even if you own the land here, you may run into issues trying to open these doors. So do remember to go inside the person door first. You can sell this in the silo and have a nice clean area. You cannot get rid of the recycling yard. It is separate farmland. And that pretty much is the map, folks. Really like the lay of the land here. It's kind of some rolling fields, rolling hills, not super steep. We do have some nice, large, dense forest areas for those that are maybe into a little bit of forestry. With respect to the farms being customizable, well, we're going to have to take a half a point off there because there's just a fair bit of things at all of the various farmyards that are not sellable. And I was really, really kind of cautious once I discovered that when I was trying to sell things, all the various triggers and things here at the starting farm, that we ran into an issue where we just had a runaway Lua error that completely caused us to lose control. And I was basically just moving across the map and I couldn't stop myself. So I had to completely just close out the game. With respect to buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique, we are going to give the map a full point there as well. And we're going to deduct a quarter of a point with respect to trigger in the interactive areas being clearly marked. I feel the map author could have done a little better job with respect to clearly indicating where some of these things are supposed to be. Maybe with little signage or just little deco objects close to those triggers to help you figure things out without basically struggling because the main farm is loaded loaded with triggers and really understanding what goes where can maybe be a little frustrating for a player and that could cause the player to just forget the map and go on to something else so in the end what well, we're going to give this map a score of 4.25 out of 5 Still a very, very respectable score. I'd like to hear your all's thoughts down in the comments below with respect to the score and what you think of this map overall. Until next time, happy farming.